So, you just finished building up a scale model or painting up a figure and you're really proud of it. And now you want to take some pictures to share on Facebook, on Instagram, with your local modeling club, or even right here on YouTube. Photographing scale models can be intimidating because you want to do your work justice, but it doesn't have to be. In this video, we're going to check out a really simple formula for getting some high quality shots of your scale models to share with your friends and family. All you're going to need is a camera, so either the manual photo setting on your phone's camera app or a regular digital camera. I'll be using the Canon M50 that we're on right now. You're gonna need a tripod to keep your shots steady. I'll have a link down in the description below if you need to pick one up. And you're gonna need some sort of light source. I'm using this adjustable desk lamp that's on my workbench. And that's it. So once you got those three things, let's hop right into it and take some photos. All right, my friends. So today, like I mentioned in the intro, we are gonna check out how to take some better photos of your scale models. After all, after you put all this work into building a tank or an aircraft or whatever it is that you're working on, you want to make sure you can get some good pictures and share those with the world, whether it be on Facebook or Instagram or right here on YouTube. So we're going to walk through uh, my kind of simple technique for taking cool, dramatic, kind of moody shots. I use a lot of these for my thumbnails for YouTube videos like the one that you saw on this video. Um, and it's a really easy process. It can be kind of intimidating for people sometimes when you try and step into getting in the nitty gritty of photography, but it's pretty simple if you just follow a few basic rules. So we're gonna work on um, some demo shots today and hopefully it's helpful to you guys. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place our tank in the center of the frame. And I've just got basic settings on here. I just turned the camera on, plugged it in. So this is whatever it was set for the last time I was shooting. Um, and we're gonna adjust it accordingly to make sure we are in the right place to photograph this particular model. So first thing we're gonna wanna do, obviously we are on the autofocus setting right now, which is totally fine for what we're doing today and we're just gonna click on our tank and make sure that it is in focus. Okay, so you can see the autofocus locked on our tank. We're all set there. So the first thing I wanna point out here, I've got a two second delay on my photos here. So what that's gonna let me do is once I actually push the shoot button, I can let go. The camera is on the tripod, so we're not gonna get any wiggle there because we're gonna be using some very particular shutter speeds. So a two second delay is helpful. So all of the shooting we're gonna do today is with a two second delay. So the first thing we're gonna talk about here is shutter speed. There are three main pillars of photography, so to speak, that we're gonna talk about that are gonna be useful for this video. We have shutter speed, as you can see right here, is currently 1 60th of a second. We have f-stop, or aperture. I currently have this at an f4.5. And we have ISO, which is sensitivity of the actual um, chip in the camera itself. Right now that's at 1,000. So those are the settings that we have right now. And we're gonna manipulate those to get to a good place for shooting our tank model here. So the first thing we're gonna manipulate here is shutter speed. And as I mentioned right now, we're at 1 60th of a second. So that means it takes 1 60th of a second for the shutter to go and capture the actual image. So if we open this up here and we slow the shutter speed down to a 50th of a second, 40th of a second, 30th of a second, and so on, all the way down here to an eighth of a second, a sixth of a second, quarter of a second, all the way up to a full second shutter speed. You can see this gets really, really bright. That's because the shutter is open for a long time and it's letting in a lot of light. Obviously, we don't want this much light coming in because we can't even see our tank here on the left. So we're gonna go back to 1 60th right now. And we'll leave it there. This next one, f-stop, this is the aperture or how big that opening actually is in the lens. So if you think about like the pupil in your eye, when you look towards a light, it closes down to let in less light so you can actually focus on what you're seeing. And if you're in a dark room or something, your pupils get really big. So right now, like I said, we're at f4.5. If we go down here to f3.5, which is the lowest that this camera will go, this is the biggest exposure that I can get, the biggest aperture that I can get um, through the lens on this camera right now. And you can see how much light it's letting in. Right now, this is a little too bright. Now, if we roll that f-stop back to f10, for example, you can see it's really dark. This is a really small opening. The aperture is really tight here, so not a lot of light coming in. One of the interesting things about f-stop too is this affects depth of field. So the lower the number, if it's f4.5 right now, you have a very tight depth of field. So only a little bit of the image is gonna be in focus. Whereas if you go up to F8 or F9, almost everything that's in your photo is gonna be in focus. So depending on the effect you wanna get, that can be relevant. So let's just go back to 4.5 here before we start shooting. 
And the last thing we want to talk about is ISO. And this is how sensitive the actual chip in the camera is. Right now I have it on a thousand, but one of the problems with having a high ISO is that the image can be kind of grainy. The final look can be kind of grainy. So it's a good rule of thumb if you're using a tripod to keep this as low as possible. So that's what we're gonna to do to start here. We're gonna go down to ISO of 100. That's as low as we can get, and that's gonna make sure we have the cleanest, most crisp photo that we can get. So that's great, that's right where we're gonna start. So if we were to take a picture right now, obviously it's gonna be way too dark, but let's just do it just so we can reference where we're at. All right, so there's our first photo with 1 60th of a second shutter speed, an f4.5 for the aperture, and an ISO of 100. So way too dark, obviously, so we gotta make some adjustments here. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust our aperture. And I wanna make sure that all of this tank is in focus. I just don't, like, I don't want any of the stowage or anything in the back to be blurry. So we're gonna jump right up here to an f6.3. That's a decent place to be. And as you can see, the shot got a little bit darker here. Let's just take an image, just for reference. As you can see the photo on the right there, it's even darker than it was before. That's because we really cranked down that aperture. It's a little bit tighter than it was before, so less light is coming in. Now with these settings, the ISO of 100 and that f6.3, that's gonna give us a pretty high quality image, but obviously the light is an issue right now. So we're gonna adjust how much light is coming into the photo. And what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna increase the amount of time that the shutter is actually open. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna grab this 1 60th shutter speed and we're gonna go way down here. You can see it's brightening up, it's brightening up. That's at one eighth of a second, sixth of a second, fifth of a second. And we're just gonna leave it at a quarter of a second right now. We're gonna try that out. So we lost our focus here. I'm just gonna fix that real quick. I'm gonna click on our tank and we're gonna take our photo. All right, so you can see with our shot on the right, we're in a better place now but our lighting is still a little funky, so we're gonna make some adjustments here. I'm gonna roll this back a little bit to one-fifth of a second, and let's take another shot here. All right, great, we're getting in the right ballpark. This is kind of a nice, moody shot, but you can see that the focus is good. Like, all of the details on our tank are very, very clear. So the next thing we're gonna do here at this point, now that I've kind of got my lighting in the right ballpark, we're gonna set up our background and make sure that we have a good setting for our tank, an interesting setting that provides some detail to what we're working on. So one thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go over to our f-stop, to our aperture, and I'm gonna change that down from 6.3 to 5.6. Now you see this got a little bit brighter, which is obviously too exposed. We don't want that, that's too bright. And then I'm just gonna compensate by reducing the shutter speed a little bit, down to 1 6th, down to 1 8th. Now let's check that out, that looks pretty good. So let's take a shot here and see how that looks. All right, you can see on our image on the right here, this is already looking way better than just with the blank table there. Our lighting is a little bit better and we're, we're getting somewhere, so this is great. Now one thing I don't like with the framing here is there's a little bit too much space in the back of my picture. Now I usually shoot shots like this for thumbnails, so I do wanna have some text in the back eventually, so a little bit of space is okay, but I wanna square up my image a little bit better just so the tank, our focus of our image is in the center, and we've got kind of an even distribution of the blank space around it. All right, so that looks a little better. Let's take a photo and see how that comes out. All right, this is pretty cool. We could work with this. So let's, uh, let's add a little more detail here to kind of liven this up a little bit. One thing I like to do in a lot of my pictures is add some tools of the trade around the vehicle to kind of reference that it's a model, because part of the illusion that we're going for here is to take something that's big, a full 1-1 one -one scale vehicle, and shrink it down. So adding some size references into your photos, whether they be thumbnails or just regular shots that you're gonna post, can be a fun little trick. So let's add some stuff in here. All right, so there's a few details in there. I threw in a hobby knife, my spruce snippers, some cross-lock tweezers, and my Tamiya Extra Thin Cement in the back there. Let's take another photo and see how that looks. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna adjust the spacing a little bit because I don't like how much space is between the objects and my actual tank. So I'm gonna tighten that up a little bit. All right, so I took another shot. This looks pretty good but I'm not really loving the kind of crooked appearance of the cutting mat, so let's adjust some stuff. All right, so this is a pretty solid shot here. Obviously our lower hull and our tracks and suspension are still in shadow, but you know what, that looks okay. I think this leaves a little bit of mystery, leaves a little bit to the imagination, and it helps focus our attention on the upper part of the tank where a lot of our details are, specifically these sandbags and our crewmen in the uh, front two hatches here, the driver and the co-driver position. 
And I really like the placement of the tools around the tank now, gives a little interest there. And once we crop this in, as you'll see in a bit here, it's gonna look a lot better and a lot more complete of an image. So I think for now, this is gonna work. So let's just check out our, check out our settings real quick for reference. So again, we've got a shutter speed right here of 1 8th of a second. We're at an aperture of an f5.6 and we're at an ISO of 100. So a good reference point for me. I think this is a pretty good shot, but obviously depending on your situation and your lighting, you're gonna to need to adjust that yourselves. But again, the important thing to take away here is shutter speed. The slower your shutter speed, the brighter the image is gonna be. The faster your shutter speed, the darker the image is gonna be. So you gotta find a nice sweet spot there. F-stop or aperture. So the higher the number, F10 for example, the more, the wider your depth of field is gonna be, the longer your depth of field, so more things will be in focus. The lower that number, the more narrow the focus is gonna be. So it'll just be a tight area with some blur in the background. But as well, the higher that F number, the lower light, the lower that F-stop number, the more light is gonna be in your photo. So adjust accordingly. And then ISO, this is the sensitivity of the chip in your camera. The lower, the better, because that's gonna be less grainy and a cleaner image at the end of the day. So let's take one more shot here and we're gonna use that actual shot to make ourselves a thumbnail that we can post on YouTube. All right guys, so now that we've taken all our pictures, I'm gonna show you a little bonus of how I whip those photos together and make that kind of dramatic thumbnail that I was talking about that I use for my YouTube videos. So we've got uh, Canva open right now. This is an awesome free platform. You can get some premium features if you pay a monthly subscription as well, but it's a great free platform for anybody to do some basic graphic design stuff. I use it for all my YouTube uh, thumbnails and a lot of my graphic overlays. So a super helpful tool. If you haven't checked it out yet, that's canva.com. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna grab the photo that we took last there. And I'm just gonna drop that into our thumbnail template here. And I'm gonna expand that so it takes up the full frame. And to start out, I'm just gonna center our tank right in the middle there. Easy peasy. Now, one thing I like to do is to keep one of my most recent thumbnails open next to this so I can grab my um, assets that I used for the last time. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna grab my layers and I'm gonna get this little ombre here and drop this in as well because I like to have that to kind of split up the image a little bit. And then I'll be able to put an image of myself or something over here on the left, just to help make this a nice eye-catching thumbnail. I'm gonna grab that photo again, and I'm gonna move our tank a little bit over here, just to compensate for our ombre there. I'll adjust it back a little tiny bit. We're gonna zoom in. And that's looking pretty good right there. Awesome. All right, you know what, we'll go up a little tiny bit. Perfect. I'm gonna hop back over here to my last thumbnail and grab this little sunspot here, this little flash, drop that in as well. That looks pretty solid. And then I wanna get my fonts that I always use. Drop that in there. Don't worry about the text because we can adjust that of course. And all we have to do now is come up with a good little title or a little caption to go with our image. So we're gonna grab this and I'm gonna say, let's see, hmm. Great shots. Well, we'll just do great, we'll do the word great. And I had a little bit of a curve on that one, so I'm gonna go in here to effects, got a curve, I'm gonna reverse shots that right there, that looks pretty solid. Okay. And then I'm gonna take this down here and do made easy. I don't wanna curve on that one. Perfect, okay, cool. We do a little overlap on our tank, that is fine. I'm gonna adjust the angles here so they're not too static. That looks pretty good. We're gonna move our tank up a little tiny bit there. Maybe even adjust it over. I think that looks solid. But you know what, we've got a 
bit of space on the side. That looks pretty good right there. And then I'm not gonna use this same picture crop of me, but for reference, when I throw one in here, we can do that. Just wanna throw made above me, so I overlap myself there. And you know what, I might actually use this picture because it's a good one. We'll see what the finished product might be. Now, the last thing we're gonna to wanna to do here is just a little adjustment to our image. So I'm gonna come in here to edit photo. I'm gonna open that up real quick. I'm gonna to go to adjust. And I think I'm gonna up the brightness a little tiny bit. I'm gonna adjust the contrast up a little bit as well. Uh, brightness can go down. That's good for now. And I'm gonna lighten up the shadows a tiny bit here. Also our vibrance and our saturation. Just, well, just a nudge, just a little bit there. All right, pretty good, cool. And then the last thing I would do is I just hop over here and grab my, oh, I need to grab my logo, drop that on the bottom. And then there you go. That's a pretty simple little thumbnail example. Um, I'll adjust this obviously just a little tiny bit before I post it. Um, like I said, I'll probably take a better headshot of myself there, but there you go. So in just what, 10 minutes, we just took some great photos of one of our tank models and just did some really quick editing and made an awesome thumbnail that we can use for YouTube. So whether you're a YouTuber yourself or you just wanna post some fun pictures on Instagram or Facebook, or even just to share some with your friends and family, hopefully these have been some helpful tips and tricks to uh, step up your scale model photography game. So uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe right here to Spruce and Brew Scale Modeling. And until next time, my friends, be well, happy building, cheers.